watching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Illinois Democrats boasted getting big things done at the Illinois State Fair this year, but is there still a long way to go? Joining us now is Illinois Treasurer Michael Frerichs. Good to have you with us. Mark, good to be with you. Uh, give us your overview, first of all, of the broader Illinois economy. As the Treasurer, you're the a money man, someone who looks at investments and looks out for the fiscal health of the state. What is the current state of Illinois' fiscal outlook? I would say the current state of the Illinois economy is good. There's a big backlog of bills that we still need to pay down. About $6 billion, um, 6.2. Yeah, so you've seen increased revenues coming in. This, uh, this spring we had a nice cash infusion of about $1.5 billion that we weren't expecting. So that is all good. But what is troubling is if you look at the national economy. There are signs of an upcoming recession. I think the legislature and the governor have to be very mindful of that before they start spending some of this windfall. I think the first thing we need to do is concentrate on our bill backlog and paying that down. Give us a little bit more granular view of that. Why are some economists looking forward and having some trepidation about the stability of the economy? What, what are the warning signs? There are several different signs out there, indicators that a lot of people feel like unemployment is low, the stock market is high, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, but the economy is more complex than that. And so economists who have studied this and studied past recessions have started to see some warning signs. There's no guarantee out there. But I think that the trade war with China that the president's engaged in has not been helpful. You've seen this around the world. Uh, the German economy has started slowing, and it's sort of the engine or the heart of Europe. And so we need to be careful. It uh, doesn't mean it's going to happen, but I think it's now is a good time to start planning for that rainy day. The jobs market, the jobs... Uh in Illinois are inching up, uh, maybe as, as a seasonal uptick perhaps, um, but still not quite growing as fast as maybe it could. What, what are some things that Illinois state government is doing, even through your office, to help spur or incentivize that job growth? And, and are there specific sectors that you're looking to, that you see more juice in, that you can really get more out of? Yeah, I think that there's the tech industry. We're invested in our Illinois Growth and Innovation Fund. We put money into Illinois venture capital and private equity that then in turn invest in Illinois startup companies. We think if we do that, we earn a good return for the state. We like to bring in additional money to the state in terms of interest. But if we can help grow Illinois technology companies, employ more people at good wages, this has an added benefit that those people will be paying more taxes into the state. Uh, Illinois has a lot of investments in its portfolio. A lot of different companies out there, Illinois state government is invested in through your office uh, and, and the treasurer's office there. But uh, one of them is Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I think recently you put out a press release with, uh, it was earlier this summer, with a number of other state treasurers from across the country uh, lobbying or trying to pressure Facebook to install an independent chairman yeah. uh, instead of Mark Zuckerberg. Why, why try to wrest control of the company from him, or what was the angle there? Not try to wrest control of the company from him, but this is a good corporate governance practice. Most all of the companies listed on the stock exchange have an independent board, independent from their CEO. This is a good practice that's been developed over time, but Mark Zuckerberg wants complete control of that company, and we think it's caused some of the problems that they've had and that you reported on with Facebook. So we're not saying Mark Zuckerberg needs to leave the company, he just needs to make a choice. Do you want to be the CEO running it day to day, or do you want to be the chairman who's over all the bigger picture? Because we think that it's the same thing with a governor and a general assembly. Our founding fathers created checks and balances, and we think that that produces better results if you have more people and more independent oversight. Certainly, there, there are benefits to checks and balances, but there's also differences in operation between a private entity and, and, and government. Oh, I, I'm aware of that, but that's why almost all the corporate boards, all the boards listed on the NASDAQ, have an independent chairman of the board from their CEO. It's just, it makes good business sense. We think Facebook should implement it as well. A lot of these big tech companies, um, YouTube, uh, iTunes, I'm going to forget a couple of them, got their start in some, one way or another through the U of I. Yep. which is an interesting thing a lot, maybe a lot of people aren't quite aware of. Um, but so, so we've got this sort of research hub, this, this uh, tech driver e e right in our backyard here in central Illinois. But we've also got uh, candidates for president like Elizabeth Warren saying, let's break up big tech. A and you recently came out, I think, the first Illinois constitutional elected officer, uh, statewide elected officer to endorse her for president. Um, how do you square those two? You, you want to drive high tech, but you want to break up big tech. Well, I don't think she's saying there's a problem with tech. It's when tech gets too big. You've yeah. seen this throughout our history. It's been like Republican presidents like Teddy Roosevelt. You had companies that were just so large. They were monopolies. They weren't good for um, our country. That The great thing about tech is it's been a disruptor. 
and you've had people like University of Illinois graduates involved in PayPal, involved in eBay. Uh, U of I graduates created the web browser, the most mosaic, which eventually came in Netscape. And so I think you still want to have that innovation. What you don't want to have is it getting too large and stifling innovation. That's the argument that some uh, uh, economic conservatives or, or will make, or more libertarian-minded economists yep. will make, is that if you try to break up or regulate big tech, you're going to stifle the small guys. Uh, is there any truth to that? Uh, I think people have different opinions out there, but I think that being nimble and being small, um, not having avenues blocked by these large corporations, I think some of them become so large that they really are able to keep others out of the market. That doesn't promote competition. It doesn't promote innovation. Why Elizabeth Warren? Oh, I, I wasn't intending to endorse, but I've been watching the candidates. I like, we have a lot of good candidates out there. But I think that she is someone who has a plan for actually making America work for everyone, a plan to support the middle class. I think her issues, whether it be curbing the excesses of the financial service industries, the large banks and credit card companies, or whether it be fighting for consumers, or whether it be college affordability, these are things that we all work on in the treasurer's office, and I like her proposals. I like the fact that she actually has concrete proposals. She's not someone who just throws out a couple of phrases. She doesn't avoid the tough issues. And our primary ought to be a primary about ideas. And you shouldn't be afraid to show them. And that's what's really won her over. Uh, she's from the Massachusetts, uh, Cambridge, sort of Harvard uh, part of the country. Do you think she can connect with rural America? Uh, she grew up in rural Oklahoma. She did, and she grew lived up a Republican. A, a, as a Republican. She lived in Texas. Someone who spent most of her life studying the hollowing out of the middle class. She saw that with her father. She saw that with herself in her own lifetime. Challenges out there. And she actually has proposals to deal with these. That's really what won her over to me and what led me to make an endorsement so early. If I recall, um, at the expense of sharing, I think a story that you, you shared last year at the Illinois Democratic County Chairman's brunch, uh, you yourself are a Democratic convert, are you not? You grew up Republican or in a Republican family? Yeah. I, I grew up, my mother was Republican, her parents were Republicans. My father, though, actually was a Democrat. My father's father was an FDR Democrat. He grew up on a dairy farm. His father died when he was very young. Uh, you had a problem, he lived through the Great Recession, and he saw Democrats doing things to bring electricity to rural households, did things to make sure that farmers could support themselves and support, supporting commodity prices. And so I grew up in a divided household. Interesting. Uh, and in a divided state, I suppose. There, there, there is a sort of a polarized regional uh, dichotomy in Illinois where we have downstate, more rural, more red, and then uh, the, the, the Democratic power base, the power source really coming from Chicago there. How do you speak to that as a leader in this state, uh, especially knowing that there are some people trying to stoke the fears of resentment uh, right now? W what do you say as someone who's uh, sort of maybe migrated or evolved over, over time from, from uh, someone who's younger in Illinois becoming a, a Democrat here? H how do you speak you're to saying, that? You're saying I'm getting older now? No, I'm, that, sa that's I'm true. saying... Every, every day I do. I'm saying that you've evolved in your views over time, uh, and, and maybe, maybe if you grew up in a family that had Republican leanings and you've sort of migrated one way, uh, can you look back with any clearer perspective and say this Democratic way? Uh, how do you talk well, to that person? I, I, I would say the parties have changed. Uh, the party I grew up in, the party my mother supported, is not the party that's being led by President Trump today. And my mother would tell you that as well. She'll still call herself a Republican, uh, but she does not agree with many of the things that this Republican president is doing. Before we let you go, uh, there's yeah. one big last push that Governor Pritzker has, and he says it will help to fix pensions, it will help to fix a lot of the problems that exist and persist in Illinois, and that's this progressive income tax. Is that a heavy lift? knowing that you need 60% on a constitutional amendment on a ballot of people to support it, and there's a lot of big interest right now, muddied interest, that are trying to already sully and taint that entire uh, push as a blank check for insider politicians who will take your tax money and use it how they see fit. Is, is that a big blank check, as they call it, or, or, or do you think that this is a lock, a surefire way to fix the state's problems. Uh, I think this is a good way to raise revenue for the state. Uh, yes, you're going to be up against big money interests that don't like it. They're going to try and scare people out there. But I will tell you that this fair tax, the vast majority of states in this country that have an income tax have different rates. You know, people said, well, this is going to be a problem for our economy. Well, we have had different rates at the federal level for over a hundred years. And in that time, you've seen phenomenal growth in our country. Our economy has done incredibly well during that time. So really, I just ask people, look at what's happened 
at our federal level and at other states that have done this and look at their levels of growth and don't fall, don't fall into the scare tactics being employed by the other side. All right, Treasurer Mike Frerich joining us. Thank you for uh, being on Capital Commission. Mark, thank you. All right, we're back in just a moment. Stick around.